Welcome. This video um, is going to discuss area formulas, specifically area formulas of quadrilaterals, such as squares, rectangles, trapezoids, and parallelograms, and triangles as well. The first problem is something that I want you to think about. It says, what does the area of a figure tell you about the figure? How is area helpful in real life? So before we go about actually calculating area, it's important to know why we're doing it. It's important to know what it actually tells us or describes to us about the figure. So when we're thinking about this question, I want to answer the first part. What does the area of a figure tell you about the figure? Basically, it tells you the amount of, sp amount of space enclosed within that, the boundaries of that figure. So if we have, for example, a square, the area of that square would be the amount of space enclosed within the four sides of that square. For example, how is the area helpful in real life? The first thing that comes to my mind personally is flooring. I want to put in, let's say, carpet or tile or wood flooring of any kind into my room, whether it's bedroom, living room, whatever, first and most important thing I need before I can go and buy material and decide what it's going to cost me is going to know how much area, how much space on that floor I need to cover with that flooring. So once I know that, I can then figure out how much material I need to buy, and then again use that to find the cost. So it's the first most important step, finding the area when it comes to, let's say, floor. What we're going to do is we are going to go through these five examples you see at the bottom, but I will have them on different slides. So let's say I start with the square and the rectangle, for example. The formula for finding the area of a square is area equals s to the second power. s standing for side. Each side of the square is the same, so you'll see that they only label one part of this square here. So s equals 2.75. So to find the area of this, we are going to do 2.75 to the second power. Quick reminder, remember that squaring a number is different than multiplying by 2. Remember, squaring a number, raising it to the second power, is multiplying it by itself. So this is the same thing as me taking 2.75 times 2.75. At that point, when we multiply them, you should get 7.5. Five, six, two, five. If you're rounding, for example, to the nearest ten, in this case, the five is going to go up, and so seven point six inches square. Remember that all labels for area are in square units. We're dealing with a two-dimensional space we're describing. So seven point six inches is square. Let's look at the rectangle now. The formula for a rectangle's area is area equals length times width. So in this figure, if we were to multiply the length and the width, we're going to take this 7 times 0.5. In that case, we will get 3.5. And again, square units, so centimeters squared. And so far, we found the area of a square and a rectangle. <laughs> Moving on now to the triangle. The triangle's formula, you will see, is one half base times height. Something to remember about the triangle's base and height is that they always create a 90 degree angle. So in this figure here, we're going to see that this dashed, or I should say, uh, yeah, dashed line in this case, and the bottom, which is the base in this case, will then form that 90 degree angle. So when we plug this in, we have 1 half times 14 times 17. And then the order of the multiplying here doesn't matter. Some people prefer to take half of 14, which is 7, 
and then multiply by 17. Some people may prefer to multiply the 14 and the 17 and then divide by 2. Some people may decide that 1 half, instead of having it as a fraction, they want to have it as a decimal of 0.5. Whichever way that I just described, you go about it. As long as you go about it carefully, you should, in each, get 119 labeling the square. So in this case, you will see whichever order that I described will still result in that 190, 19 feet square. Trapezoid. Now the trapezoid has op one pair of opposite parallel sides. And in this case, you can see the bottom and the top of this trapezoid are those that pair of parallel sides. You can clearly see that the sides, the left and the right, will not be parallel. They would, at some point, if we extended them, intersect. So this is a trapezoid. The formula for this looks a little more complicated, but in all honesty, all formulas are just directions on what to do. Do not get overwhelmed seeing a formula that's longer. If you take it step by step, it is telling you what to do. So now in this case, the height and the bases Again, make 90 degree angles, whether it's at the bottom or the top. And B1 and B2 stand for base 1 and base 2. Don't automatically think bottom all the time for base. Bases um, can come in ver as various parts, top, bottom, left, right. It all depends on the rotation of the figure, so just keep that in mind. So in this case, the height is 5.5. And the bases that create the 90 degree angles with that height are both 8.5 the top and 13.5 given at the bottom. Here, one of the key things to note is that that addition is in parentheses. So according to order of operations, you must take the 8.5, add it to 13.5 first, which is 22. Now, we go back to the same discussion that we had before. Once we have nothing but multiplication here, the order doesn't technically matter. We can do 1 half of 5.5, then multiply by 22. We can do 1 half of 22 and then multiply by 5.5. We can multiply the 5.5 and the 22 and divide by 2. We can use 0.5 for 1 half. We have options. All of them should then result in a final answer of 60.5. Label it again because it's area, meters, square. Again, for this one, I will stress that the addition has to come first because it's in parentheses. If you take this middle step here and you just plug that into a calculator, then do, and let's say you don't use parentheses because some, some calculators do not have them. So since some calculators do not have parentheses, you want to make sure you add it together. Hit equal, get that amount of 22 prior to doing any other multiplication. Last example, and it's a little bit quicker, is the parallelogram. Parallelogram, the formula is area, oops, pen back, area equals base times height. Again, you'll see the base and the height. Any bases and heights will always create 90 degree angles, so it's definitely something to look for. It creates the 90 degree angle down the bottom, it creates the 90 degree angle at the top, and so we can see that whether we have the top of this parallelogram or the bottom, which are technically the same, that is going to be our base amount. And so area equals 6 times 11, which is 66 inches. The only two-dimensional formula that we really didn't talk about yet in this video is circles. And you will see coming soon a circle video that includes the area of a circle and circumference formula.